Hi, I'm Conor Houghton. This is Lecture 13 in the Probability and Combinatorics section of our unit Mathematics for Computer Science A. Uh, this lecture will be about the binomial distribution. Okay, so we imagine uh, the experiment of rolling a dice, say, seven times, and counting the number of times uh, we get a six. So seven rolls the dice, uh, we're counting the number of sixes, and we ask, what is the probability that we get exactly uh, four sixes? So we're going to have x will be the random variable of, uh, of, the, of the number of sixes, and what we're asking is the probability um, that x is uh, uh, four. Well, uh, we're, we're well set up for doing that now. So imagine that the fours come at the start. Uh, so we get a, a, a four, uh, uh, sorry, imagine that the four sixes come at the start. So the probability uh, of a six is a six. There's six different faces to the dice. And we're asking that uh, we get uh, four of them in a row. And then uh, after that, we get uh, three not sixes. And the probability of a not six is five over six. And so um, probability of four six, uh, four sixes in a row, one over six to the power of four, followed by uh, three not sixes in a row, five over six to the power of three. And of course, we're not interested in just the event of getting uh, four sixes in a row. We're uh, interested in the event of getting uh, four sixes out of seven. So at seven, uh, choose four different possible uh, arrangements of, of where the, the four sixes are. And that's uh, P4. So we're well set up for that uh, type of calculation, but what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, describe this distribution uh, in, in, in general. And this distribution is called the binomial distribution. It's the result of what people often call the binomial experiment. So in a binomial experiment, uh, we have uh, n uh, repetitions of an identical, uh, an identical experiment. Uh, each, uh, each trial, uh, each of those n, is independent. One doesn't affect the other, but each is identical, that the same probability uh, of the, the same events. And we'll say that p is the probability of one event, which we'll call uh, success. And for um, binomial distribution, the idea is that there's only two possible events, either a success or a failure. And if uh, success happens with a probability p, uh, then failure happens with uh, probability 1 minus p. And the idea is that the random variable we're looking at uh, is, the, uh, is the number of successes. So this is a, a binomial uh, binomial um, experiment, and the thing we're interested in is the uh, probability that x is equal to some value which we'll call uh, r, for example. So p x of r, well that's going to be n choose r, the uh, number of different slots that we arrange the r successes into, uh, the probability of r successes, which is p to the r, and the probability of n minus r uh, failures, which is uh, 1 minus p to the n minus r. And so that's the probability distribution uh, for uh, the binomial experiment. And uh, it's one of the sort of standard uh, discrete probability distributions. Uh, I have a little graph of it here uh, for two different cases. It's hard to see, but you can see it in your notes. Uh, this, this case here is with p uh, equals to a quarter. You can see it's kind of slightly slanted. Uh, and this uh, is for p uh, p a half. So those are two examples of what the distribution looked like. But it's a discrete distribution. These aren't continuous smooth curves. These, these are, are, are histograms. So uh, let's uh, write down the formula again and, and talk about it a little bit more. So we have uh, p x of r is equal to n choose r, uh, p to the uh, r, uh, one, uh, 1 minus p, we'll call that q, uh, n minus r. So q is equal to 1 minus p. Uh, the first thing we know about a probability distribution, or by definition, is that it should add to 1. So uh, that's, that z equals the sum from um, r equals 0 to n. The uh, lowest number of possible um, successes is 0. The highest number of successes is uh, n. Uh, and that's n to the r, uh, p to the r, q to the n minus r. Uh, but of course, from the binomial theorem, uh, or binomial expansion, we know that this thing here is just equal to p uh, plus q uh, to the power of n. So the binomial expansion of that is given by this sum here. And uh, uh, we know that p, by, uh, is 
p is p, q by definition is 1 minus p, and so this thing here is just 1 to the n, which is equal to 1. In other words, uh, z is equal to 1, which is as it should be, because z uh, is also equal to the sum of p x r, sum from r equals 0 to n. So z, this thing here, is the sum of the probabilities, and we know by definition that the probabilities must add to 1, and we've just checked here uh, that they do. So that's a uh, well, that's a relief. It's something that should have happened and uh, must have happened, which it did. But it also points to a, a, an interesting trick, which I'll, I'll show you now. This trick, um, we're, we're seeing it here, but it, it's it, it's a much more general phenomena and uh, it's applicable in, in lots of different examples of where we're interested in the properties of distribution. So we write uh, uh, Z, we write on the formula for Z, which is... Um, uh, r equals 0 uh, to n, uh, n choose r, uh, p to the r, 1 minus p uh, to the n minus r. And then we're going to differentiate z with respect to p. And we know that that has to be 0 because uh, z is a constant, z is just 1, it doesn't depend on p, although its explicit form here has p's in it, uh, they all add to give something that has uh, no uh, explicit dependence on p. Uh, now, uh, this sum here, it's a nice sum, it's a finite sum, so there's no uh, problem uh, with taking the derivative. So we have the derivative here, n minus r, uh, p to the r, 1 minus p to the n minus r. The ddp can come inside the sum, uh, and we'll get two terms. We'll get uh, r equals 0 to n, n choose r, dp to the r, dp, 1 minus p to the n minus r, uh, plus... Uh, r equals 0 to n, n choose r, p to the r, ddp of uh, 1 minus p uh, to the n minus r. And then, uh, well, this is a, a straightforward differentiation, dp to the r, dp is r, p to the r minus 1, d, 1 minus p to the n minus r, dp is equal to n minus r, 1 minus p to the n minus r minus 1, and then we get an extra minus, that's from the chain rule, because uh, we're using ddp of 1 minus p is equal to minus 1. And so we can do uh, these difference, uh, do these derivatives uh, there quite easily, and I'll, I'll write them out now on the next sheet. Sorry. So just to get back to where we were, I had written um, uh, z or dz dp equals zero equals um, the sum uh, r equals zero to n n choose r and then this term here is dp to the r uh, dp which is r p to the r minus one uh, and then we'll just for brevity write this as q to the n minus r uh, minus that was the minus from from the chain rule uh, uh, r equals 1 to n, n choose r again, p to the r, and now we have n minus r, q uh, to the r minus, uh, n minus r minus 1. So let's move over so you can see that. So uh, that's straight differentiation. Uh, now I'm going to do um, something which may at first seem counterintuitive, although you'll see quickly why I do it, and, and that's I'm going to put this, this p back. So I'm going to divide by and multiply by p. So it's 1 over, so uh, basically 1 over p by p is just 1. So I can always uh, multiply by 1. So I have 1 over p. Uh, now the p that goes with that to make it 1, I'm going to put inside the, inside the sum. So it goes here, pr, and then uh, q to the n minus r. So I've taken uh, p over p, uh, which is 1, the p that went on top, has gone to multiply the p, p to the r minus 1 to give me p to the r. And I do the same thing here. Minus q sum r equals 0 to n. n choose r, p to the r, n minus r, uh, q to the n minus r. And uh, what you, you see here is that the, the um, we have an r, p to the r, q to the n minus r. That looks a bit like uh, the expected value. And in fact, we'll put the similar terms together. So we have a, a minus here and a minus there. So that gives me, uh, that gives me a, uh, 
a plus, and so we get 1 over p plus 1 over q, sum n choose r, r, p to the r, q to the n minus r, and then we have minus 1 over q, n is just a constant, this is the sum over r, so we can bring it out the front, n, uh, and then again we have an r equals 0, r equals 0 to n, r equals 0 to n, n choose r, uh, p to the r, q to the n minus r there. And so this, this term, well, that's just z again, that's just equal to 1, that's easy. But this term, well, that's equal to the sum uh, r equals 0 to n, n choose r, um, r by um, px of r. Oh, sorry, there's no uh, n choose r there. So this, this term here, these bits, this bit, this bit, and this bit together, um, well, they're the expression for, of, for p x of r. And so uh, this, this whole sum here is just a sum from r equals 0 to n of r p x of r. And so that thing is just the expected value of x. And so what we end up with is 0 is equal to 1 over p plus 1 over q, expected value of x, and then from here, minus uh, n over q. So if we multiply it across, just leave one more piece of paper. If we, so just to copy what I had a second ago, we have uh, 0 is equal to um, 1 over p plus 1 over q, expected value of x, minus q over n. Sorry, n over q, like so. And now I'm going to multiply across the, the q, and I'll move this to the other side. I'll get n is equal to q over p plus 1, like so, multiplied by the expected value of x. Uh, 1 plus q over p is equal to putting everything over p, p over um, p plus q, and p plus q is, of course, equal to 1. So that's, that's uh, nonsense there. Surprisingly, it's just 1 over p. And so I get the expected value of x is equal to n times uh, p. So you can see that what this trick has allowed us to do is that uh, it's allowed us to calculate the, um, the expected value. The expected value of x, so the expected value of x is just, as we said before, the sum from r is equal to 0 to n of r uh, p of r, uh, which is equal to the sum from r equals 0 to n of n choose r r uh, p to the r, q to the n minus r. So we need to do this sum to work out uh, p of x. And that sounds like a, a difficult thing to do, uh, but it turns out that we can uh, do it quite easily uh, using this, this trick that I just outlined, which uh, doesn't uh, directly try to sum this thing up, rather it starts off by differentiating z. It turns out um, that if you differentiate z, if you look at what d2z dp squared is, that actually gives you the standard deviation or the variance, and that's going to be equal to npq. So uh, this trick of um, differentiating the, uh, the z, the, the thing that is basically equal to 1, the sum of the probabilities, uh, that allows you to work out uh, the expected, some of the expected values. It work, allows you to, for example, work out the expected value of x and show that the expected value of x, in other words, the mean, in this case, is equal to n times p. And that kind of makes sense. So each trial has a, has a, a pth chance of being a success. Uh, and so and there's n trials you would expect on average to get np successes. Uh, the variance is uh, harder to work, work out in that, using that kind of re reasoning. But you can try yourself and probably will have to in a, in a worksheet uh, and, and show that the variance of the binomial distribution by differentiating z twice is equal to n times p times q. Thank you.